um, uh, it is a joy that we are here to listen to a very important topic because the eyes are a window to the world and without them, life would have been different for each of us. So I want to welcome all of us and hope that we will stay to the end to listen to the specialist who is going to help us today on this topic. As you know, the Coalition of Societies for the Rights of Older Persons in Nigeria is a coalition of almost over 200 PSOs, NGOs, retirement groups, professionals in aging, all the people working with older persons. I'm glad that um, we are able to put this together. And this event is part of our celebration of the UN uh, Day for Older Persons. Yesterday, we had a football match. Next week, um, we'll have a golf tournament for those who are 60 and above. But yesterday's match was very interesting. We played with young people and the scores was 4-4. So want to thank you for being with us on this last one this morning. And I wish every one of us a good time together. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, um, Senator Ezra Joku OFR. We want to seize this opportunity once more to congratulate you on your conferment by the president. We really do appreciate you as our president. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. You know, it's the work we have done in cost wrapping with older persons that has contributed to it. Um, I'm glad that the work we have done to ensure that the his mic is muted again. To ensure that national policy on aging, the National uh, National Senior Citizen Center, our bill that has been passed, the bill we crafted that has been passed by the two chambers of National Assembly, which is now waiting for the presidential um, sign off. All of these, plus um, my company modeling partnership with government in the healthcare, the only company that is for today uh, in PPP laboratory management with government. Uh, all these contributed to the recognition, but most importantly, it is cost dropping work. Thank you all members of cost dropping. And like you knew, I dedicated it to our members and I pray that God will continue to honor us. Thank you very much, architect Victoria Ono. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. And uh, we are set to go. I was hoping we'll take a little bit more time and see if more people will join us, but we can't um, waste too much time. I, I am seeing very important people on this webinar. And um, I want to say, uh, welcome. Time will fail me to begin to mention each and every one of you. I hope we'll be able to do that at the end of the webinar. All right, today we are going to discuss um, World Sight Day. Today is, uh, we are celebrating World Sight Day. Um, and um, it's a day that is globally recognized uh, with intention to draw attention to blindness and vision impairment. The World Health Organization report on vision and the United Nations resolution on vision have cemented eye health as critical to achieving the sustainable development goals. And therefore in 2020, Her Majesty, late uh, Queen joined the celebrations in 2021 from Brooklyn in Bangladesh, over 3 million pledges to love your eyes were recorded. And uh, in 2022, in which we are now, you, uh, we look forward to a bigger World Sight Day. And we are also contributing to that day by holding this webinar. And uh, of course, you know that um, uh, Cost Roping has been in the forefront of letting the public know about their health 
especially as it pertains to older persons. And uh, we always try to bring this um, attention to the older persons because they, are, they, take, they seem to take a back uh, stage most of the time when people discuss these topics. And so today, um, we have one of the uh, best we have in the country going to take us on this journey. And his name is Dr. Nkem Okorafo. He is an optometry graduate from the University of Benin. He obtained a postgraduate degree from the London School of Optometry and Fellowship of the Nigeria uh, Postgraduate College of Optometry and American Academy of Optometry, respectively. So you now know that you have one of the best in the house. He's the CEO of uh, True Vision Group, one of the largest indigenous eye care organizations in West Africa subregion. Dr. Kem is in the is in the executive of the Nigeria Postgraduate College of Optometry, and has served in the board of Auburn. He is a member of Ikoiko and is married with three lovely kids. Uh, join me to welcome Dr. Nkemokorafo as he takes us on the journey of um, sight uh, of the older person. Uh, so you're, you're on now, could you please? Um, Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm having difficulty uh, starting the video. Can you help me from your end? And can you enable me share the screen? There is network problem. Wow. Yes, okay, network. I don't know if you can you hear me? Can you hear we can hear you probably you need to uh, move your 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 space. I'm so sorry Hello, can we? I can hear you properly. Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, we can, yes. We can hear you. Okay. So can you uh, enable me to start the video? I'm having it's difficulty doing that. It's enabled. Can you see me? It's enabled. Yeah. All right. Just one moment, please. I'm sorry about this. I don't know what's good looking. Okay. We can't see you yet. Okay. Wow. You can send the the slide to us on WhatsApp and then we'll share it from here for you. Okay, share it now. Can you see the slide? Yes, yes. we can. Yes. Okay. 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 But, um, Unfortunately, I don't know uh, the video, my video. You are not seeing me yet, right? No, but if we, it's the angle at which you put your phone. OK, so I don't know if you can take a mini break. Let me get this thing resolved again. OK, please feel free. Okay. Please. Please, since we are seeing him and seeing the screen, can't he just talk? Oh. We are seeing the screen and we are hearing. Maybe it, that's not the way he functions. Good morning, ma'am. No, 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 no. I... Just one moment. I'm having difficulty moving the uh, slides. So... The slide is still very important to please. The slide is important. Just, uh, just you should very, not just stop. The slide is important. Let's just give him. 
Just give me a moment me. and we'll resolve this. I'm, I'm sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. This is well, go ahead. Take your time. We we, we want to wait wait on you. Okay. Um, uh, we have our members okay. from across the country. Okay. We have um, our coordinator for Yobe, and we have our coordinator for Benue. We have our coordinator for. Um, is that a kitty? No, Oshun, is that right? Okay. We have some of our members from Imo, from um, Lagos, from Ogun State. Um, we have a member from Kano. We have um, all our members. We're hoping that this will be a very interesting topic. And while we are waiting, um, our, our coordinators can shout hi to all of us. So, unmute yourself and just say hi from where you are. Hi from Ogun State. My name is Gwenga Poisson. I'm delighted to be on the platform today. Good morning, Mr. President and um, everybody in the house. Coordinator, shout hi to us. Hi, my name is Hello. Hello. I'm Pastor Sandy from Bar Hi, I'm saying hello. We didn't hear you. Hi, my name is Mm. Hi from Benway State. Hi, my name is We are excited about a president honor. Thank you, ma. Yes. Sunday. Hi to us. Sunday from Kano. Is it Kano? Uh, Pastor Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Auntie Bridget. Hi, how are you? We thank God. Hello. Hope, hope the weather is okay where you are. Hello. We can hear you. Who can hear Hi. you? Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, I'm from Amobia. Oh, it's good to hear you, ma. Thank you for being here. <laughs> you are now and become have, a local we champion. Have, we have people, yes, so lo real local champion. <laughs> Uh, we have people from uh, Undo and Edo. They are here. I don't know why they are not saying hi. And yeah. Presido, congratulations again. Thank you, Ma. Thank you Thank very you. much, um, the Honorable for Minister. The National Thank you. Thank you very congratulations. much. Congratulations. Proud of you always. Thank you, Ma. We are still waiting for the doctor, so that's why we are yeah, having this. Okay, his slide is up okay. again. The slide is moving. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see me, but at some point, if uh, the video comes on, uh, we do that. But uh, uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the World Side Day program of the Coalition of Societies for Rights of older persons in Nigeria, cause Robin. I'm actually 
uh, if this is a new uh, name to me, uh, I was just uh, introduced to this coalition. And interestingly, uh, just that you, you are not seeing me, uh, I look young, but I'm aging. <laughs> You know, so I, uh, a friend of mine said that uh, your group has just called you to join them. So, uh, and I laughed. My name is Dr. Nkem Ukurafo. I am an optometrist and the CEO of True Vision Eye Care Group. As an optometrist, I must say a big thank you to Cost Dropping for considering sight as an important aspect of aging. Very many, many narratives do not realize that without sight or vision, many other pursuits may not be realized. So I, this is a big thank you to you guys for you know, considering that before you follow other uh, lofty uh, you know, goals that you need to see. So I thank you all and I welcome you all. You know, the slogan for the World Sight Day says, love your sight. I love mine and I want you all to love your sight. Thank you for listening. So we will just uh, proceed. So this is the topic of today, aging with better sight. Please, if I'm not being uh, heard, you know, let me be reminded. So if I'm being heard, so I can just uh, continue. This could be an interactive uh, session. If there is a question, somebody might need to raise his or her hand on the Zoom and then, or the moderator can just tell me that it's a question and then we'll take the question and uh, proceed. Aging. Aging can be defined as the time-related deterioration of physiological functions necessary for survival and fertility. This is the process of growing old. Actually, a friend of mine just uh, told me that to know that you are growing old, you know, whenever, you know, people that ordinarily you will not father start calling you daddy this, daddy that, mommy this, mommy that. Once you get to that stage where people stop calling you uh, by your names and then they are calling you daddy this, mommy this, then you know that <laughs> you are getting there, you are aging. It's a good thing anyway. So I am thankful I'm aging and also alive. So the desires of uh, young people normally are different from those of the old people. You know, young people have dreams, as they say. You know, they they have so many goals and all that we did when we were young. But when you're getting old, you have slightly different uh, desires. Most of them are vision. You want to be growing old, be aging, and then seeing properly, seeing reasonably well. The other one is mobility. You want to be able to move from point to point without being assisted as you age. Then of course, everyone wants to be of sound mind. You know, if you are of sound mind and you are aging, then you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, you know, involve yourself in uh, reasonable uh, discussions, you know, and uh, you might talk reasonably without, uh, you know, losing your thoughts and mind, you know. So people who are aging desire to have sound mind. Of course, they want to be, have generally good health because, of course, if you are growing old, you don't want to be bed reading, you want, don't want to just end up, uh, you know, uh, in hospital all the time. So the prayers and desires of the old will include good health. Of course, the last one I mentioned here, or I noted here will be money. Well, we know from growing old that money 
is not everything. You, if you have money and you don't have these other desires, then money may not uh, rescue you. And I'm sure you guys will agree with me that money, if you have lots of money and you don't have good health, you can't see, you can't move around, you can't uh, discuss intelligently, you can't, uh, you don't have good health, then money at that point may not be uh, something that can save you. So let's look at aging. I know uh, cost dropping, we have, uh, you know, definitions of aging, which uh, may be more suitable than the one I'm giving you, but generally, you know, you know, aging starts at 45, 40 to 45 years. Most people think that uh, aging is from 40 years. So we can just say generally 40 to 45 years is when people start regarding people or themselves as aging, not necessarily old, but aging. And with age, several problems uh, may develop, which consequently will affect vision. You know, so those uh, problems, I can just uh, categorize, ca categorize them in two. Uh, the first ones will be refractive. So when I, I say refractive, they'll be related to ability of uh, one to focus sharply on objects through the refractive system of the eye. Uh, as we move forward, I'll show you a picture of the eye or you know, so you see all the structures or the main structures, you know, that uh, constitutes the refractive uh, system of the eye. The second aging, uh, the second category of aging problems that might or will consequently affect vision will be pathology. So, we will also touch those on several pathological situations or degenerative situations of the eye or of the body, which, uh, you know, consequently eventually affect uh, vision and sight. You know, so uh, please, uh, uh, most of the time, sight and vision can be interchanged. So I might say vision or sight, I mean the same, uh, uh, the same thing. So let's look at the refractive uh, problem. So generally most of the refractive uh, problems of age will be presbyopian. So the age, causes the lens of the eye to harden and become less flexible, resulting in difficulties focusing objects at near. I'm sure most members of uh, cost dropping understand what I'm saying. You know, as you age, you know, you start having problems uh, reading things or viewing things at near. And this is a very, very major problem of aging. I don't know if uh, there will be up to 5% uh, of your members who do not use uh, one aid or the other to read, since uh, most of your members should be of the same age that we are describing. So presbyopia starts around the same age I described earlier on, it starts around age 40. It affects majority of the aging population. So like I told you, it's just a major aging issue, but thankfully it's not a, an insurmountable problem. It's something that, you know, is usually resolved using uh, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, age, either reading glasses, multifocals, and, and, and so forth. So presbyopia uh, is what makes you 
you know, find out that you, when you're reading as you age, that you probably need an extension of your hands. You know, people read and they find out that they can't read that close range, they keep pushing things away, away until, uh, you know, they now probably require an additional hand or an extension of their hand or their arm to be able to hold uh, a reading uh, material. So once you get to this stage where you find it difficult to read, assuming ordinarily you can see things at distance. The reason I said this is people, there are different other problems, refractive problems in the eye. So I'm assuming that you have at young age, you are okay, or you have taken care of your refractive problems. If that is the case, and then you find it difficult to read, then that is presbyopia that sets in. And if you are around this age uh, group, so uh, of course you need to see an eye doctor, see an optometrist and get an eye examination and this problem can easily be solved. So this is a picture of, you know, uh, probably a member of uh, cost dropping uh, in the UK who now uses uh, reading glasses. So you can, you can, you, you can see this is, uh, she's just trying to read a book and then uh, she needs a uh, reading aid. This definitely looks like uh, the caused by presbyopia. So I said the solution for uh, uh, presbyopia, you know, management will be with usually with lenses. They could be just plain reading lenses. They could be multifocal lenses. So what I, uh, I just described as multifocal, multifocal lenses would be lenses that have, you know, some sort of distance part and then a near part. I'm sure we are all familiar with this because more than half of you may be using these kind of lenses. So these ones enable you look up and view uh, at distance, and then you look down to view at near. So these are, the, when they have two lenses, they are called bifocals. When they have different uh, focal lens in one lens, they are called progressive or multifocal or, you know, barifocal lenses. So these are just, this uh, diagram is just to show you what I think you already know. This is another diagram describing a uh, multifocal or showing how multifocal lenses uh, operate. They have distance areas, they have intermediate uh, areas, and then they have the reading area. Of course, the reading area is the area that uh, most of us members of course shopping use to be able to read uh, tiny prints. Okay, so this is uh, a diagram of the eye describing, uh, you know, showing uh, the features of the eye, you know, the structures, uh, the front is called the cornea, and there's a space here filled by fluid, and then there's, this is the lens, uh, yeah, as we move forward, we'll have cause to talk about the lens, and this is the vitreous. This is a, a kind of jelly-like uh, fluid-filled area, uh, and then the back is the retina where images are formed. Okay, uh, this is the optic nerve that transports uh, the image, the results of the from the retina to the brain. So this is uh, basically what a cross section of an eye would look. So I don't want to bore you guys with it because uh, I understand most of you are uh, architects like uh, like uh, architect Ono and uh, some uh, senators. So I will not uh, want to bore you with diagrams like this, no, but it's no, no body. No, boss with everything, no. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it is... <laughs> <laughs> you need to note that this is how the eye looks. And if you have a cross section of the eye, this is what you're going to see. And exactly, uh, it's interesting so that when, if 
something happens and uh, a doctor is telling you the location of uh, the event in the eye, you will be able to at least uh, conceptualize it. So this is what uh, the diagram of the eye looks. So uh, we, I, I do not want to continue talking about the presbyopia because it's a simple thing that you all know about. And uh, we, uh, but what I'll stress is that once uh, you start uh, having difficulty uh, seeing objects at near, you need to uh, do a proper examination so that a doctor can determine uh, the prescription required to solve the problem. So the, the eye doctor, the optometrist will be in a, a situation, in a position to actually tell you that depending on uh, what you do, because we look at the kind of work you do and uh, give you appropriate uh, prescription for that, uh, you know, so that you may function properly. If you remember, I said the problems are refractive and pathological. So the refractive problem is the one I described that the main one is presbyopia, you know, of course. There is far sightedness, or that eventually, as people grow older, they get more far sighted and all that. But the major refractive issue that is involved with aging is uh, presbyopia. So, now, as you know, the eye focuses on objects to form images on the retina at the back of the eye. So I showed you the retina at the back of the eye. I'll still go back to that image so that you see what I'm talking about. So these images are sent to the brain via the optic nerve for interpretation. This then results in a decision by the individual that views the object, okay? So, if you are looking at an object, let's say you are looking at something that uh, is red. As soon as you look at it, maybe an object that is red, it creates an image at the back of your eye. And the optic nerve trans transports you know, the information to the brain for processing. So it's the brain that will tell you that what you are seeing is fire. And so the brain will now decide that that red thing is fire. So don't touch it, you know, do something about it, you know? So this is how uh, the relationship between the eye and the brain is, because the brain is what determines, uh, you know, uh, what everyone does is the processing center of the body. So if any abnormality or degeneration, degeneration along this pathway will result in reduction or loss of vision. So what I'm saying is I will see if there's, okay, there's another diagram that may describe what we're saying, okay? so. Typically, this is an apple, you know, and the eye views this apple. An image is formed at the back of the eye, at the retina of this apple. Ordinarily, the eye doesn't know, at this point, the eye may not know whether it was an apple or is an apple or an orange or anything. The, this is the optic nerve. And this image is transported from the optic nerve to the brain. It is in the brain. I don't want to explain more about the brain. It's a very complicated uh, you know, uh, thing that uh, does not, uh, is beyond the scope of this uh, discussion. 
So the brain, within the brain, the brain knows that what an apple is. It can differentiate it from an orange. It knows how it looks. So and within seconds, the brain will say that's an apple. And you know, you now decide what you want to do with the apple. So and what I'm saying is that anything that happens between this place and the brain from the front, which I, I showed you the front is the cornea, there's a lens, there's the vitreous, there's the retina, and then there's this optic nerve and the brain. So any disruption along this pathway will lead to either loss of vision, total loss of vision, or partial loss of, loss of vision. So it will affect uh, vision generally. So that was what I was describing, that once there's an abnormality or degeneration along this pathway, it will result in reduction or loss of vision. This is the, the other diagram I was showing you, uh, you know, an enlarged diagram of the eye. The other one was small. So this will show you where the cornea is. Uh, this is the space I said is flu uh, fluid filled, you know, the anterior chamber is filled with aqueous. And then this is uh, the lens of the eye, which is uh, held by uh, ligaments and muscles around here. And then this is the vitreous, filled with vitreous that I told you is jelly-like. And the back of the eye is the retina. The macula is where you focus sharply with. So that's what you need to know. And then this is the optic nerve. So the optic nerve collects the information around the retina at the back of the eye and then transports to the brain. Let's look at uh, most common causes of age-related vision problems. Cataract. This is also one name that most people know. Some people don't know what it is, but well, because uh, as a, a doctor, I, I see patients who describe everything as cataract. So cataract is actually, you remember I showed you a diagram of the eye, which has a lens. So when the lens becomes cloudy, it results in visual impairment. So that's a, the very simplistic way of describing what happens. The lens is ordinarily clear so that there will be, the light will travel from the front of the eye to the retina, to the back of the eye. So once the lens is cloudy or opaque, so that is cataract. And definitely because uh, the lens becomes cloudy, the way I would describe it is uh, if you have a window and you're looking through the window and then somebody puts a, a veil you might still see, but you won't see as clearly as somebody who uh, is looking through the window without the veil on. So when the lens becomes cloudy, it might, you know, look like uh, something like a veil, you know, over the eye. So, and this is cataract. So the, once the patient develops cataract, you know, which is an aging problem. Cataract is definitely an aging problem. There are other reasons why people can have cataracts, but the main reason is age. So it's an aging uh, uh, problem. It comes up from, uh, you know, 40 years of, old, uh, of age uh, upwards. Generally, you know, younger people, they might have cataract for some other reason but not age. And thankfully, cataract is uh, treatable by surgical means. And how do they do it? You know, the surgeons will 
remove this lens and replace it with another lens, a lens we call an intraocular lens. You know, it's, or you can describe it as an artificial lens, but that lens will now be inserted in place of this lens. It will be a clear lens and it will now return your vision to normal or near normal. Before the uh, surgical breakthrough, cataract was the main reason for blindness in the world. It was completely the major, the, the number one cause of blindness in the world. But that has reduced because, uh, because surgeons have uh, successfully uh, removed the cataractous lenses and replaced with a the IOLs, intraocular lens, uh, lenses, and patients these days just walk in and do those surgeries and uh, within uh, days, in actual fact, they start seeing the same day, but uh, within days or within a few weeks, they'll be fine. And uh, I'm sure it is possible that somebody watching us now might have uh, undergone that kind of surgery, cataract surgery. So we, we thank God that we have uh, the surgery to rescue people from uh, cataract. Once uh, those surger uh, surgeries are done, the person sees properly, maybe if the vision is not returned to uh, normal, then it will be corrected with lenses. So we can still end up wearing those uh, progressive lenses to make sure that you know the vision becomes uh, sharp and normal. I'll look at uh, another name here, glaucoma. This is also majorly an aging problem. I'll just uh, give you a, a very simplistic description or uh, or uh of how or what glaucoma is it's like i told you earlier on you know the eye is uh, filled with uh, fluid this area is filled with uh, you know aqueous humor and the pressure of the eye is maintained as an, a normal pressure. No, usually, normal pressure will be like, uh, you know, 17, around 17 uh, millimeters of mercury. And once the, the sustained elevated pressure in the eye, it can result in irreversible loss of vision. And this is what we describe as glaucoma simply how does it uh, result in loss of vision remember i told you that the eye sees the eye can see and then what it sees is transported via the optic nerve to the brain so what does glaucoma do in a simple term if the pressure builds up in the eyeball, you can see the entry point here of the optic nerve. That is a weak point, you know, in the eye. The eye is covered by very strong structures around, and this hole that enables the optic nerve and the other things that enter through this hole, like uh, blood vessels, uh, you know, veins and the uh, arteries. So the pressure starts pushing here and it might end up cutting off the link between the optic nerve and the brain. It might just cut off the optic nerve from the end, the beginning here. And once that happens, the eye will not see. So if it happens partially, the eye will not see partially. Then there will be a partial loss of vision. Then if it cuts off completely, 
then we're in a situation where the person uh, is blind. And for now, it's irreversible. So glaucoma is a very serious thing. You know, it's a very serious thing and it's a major cause of blindness. And the solution is to is, is early detection. If you are above 40, you definitely need to have regular eye examinations. You definitely need to have even dilated regular eye examinations. So all the uh, tissue uh, in the eye will be observed. And then a doctor might tell you that, uh, tell you if you have any issue or not. Because definitely glaucoma does not have, it has just little signs and symptoms. Doesn't have, is most of the time uh, asymptomatic. It doesn't have symptoms. So you can go around, walk around, uh, just like uh, hypertension, just not feeling anything, not knowing anything, and then suddenly the vision is gone. And if you get to that stage where vision is lost due to glaucoma, then you know it's irreversible. So the advice is for uh, every uh, aging person to make sure that they have regular eye examinations, uh, which usually can reveal uh, uh, issues that might become serious in future. Glaucoma, of course, is managed by drugs. There is no real treatment for glaucoma. It's just managed by drugs and or surgery, maybe laser or other types of uh, you know, surgeries. So uh, the first step uh, that the doctors uh, uh, would use would be to manage glaucoma with uh, you know, different types of uh, uh, eye drops and medication that are available. When uh, you know, those fail, then surgery becomes uh, a necessity. So we will also, while we are describing these problems, we will continue to stress the importance of continuous, regular eye examination by, you know, any person that is aging, that is above 40. If I talk about glaucoma, I mean the glaucoma, the damage glaucoma has done to so many people in Nigeria, you know, it will take uh, the whole day. So we should just note that this is a silent, uh, this is a very serious, uh, you know, blinding uh, disease. And we should just avoid it by just making sure that we do eye, eye examinations. If we do, if it's detected, there's a remedy usually if it's at the early stage. Age-related macular degeneration. I don't know if you know what macula is. I will go back to that diagram again and show you what macula is. Okay, so this is a diagram of the eye. And we said the back of the eye is the retina. So you can see a place pointed as macula. This is that part of the retina that enables you to focus sharply. So very, very sharp focuses are made by the macula. The rest of the retina will be used for peripheral uh, view. And so centrally and sharply, this is where images, sharp images are formed in the macula. Due to some unknown cause, it's interesting, uh, if, you, if you are uh, you know, in medicine, there are so many things that are unknown. The, you know, 
the macular degeneration, particularly age-related macular degeneration, uh, is of unknown cause. It is thought that it is caused by environmental factors or heredity. Genetic factors are thought to be implicated, but there is no definitive known cause for macular degeneration other than age. So what is said is that the macula starts degenerating, and as it's degenerating, the, uh, the individual might lose partially or totally uh, the sight particularly the central uh, vision. Age-related macular degeneration is managed, you know, by drugs. But of course, people who uh, are developing it are also advised to change their lifestyle, maybe do not uh, stop smoking, uh, do some other things, eat, uh, you know, uh, fruits and vegetable. Uh, and then it is uh, now thought that things, uh, there are things that contain zinc might help. Okay. And uh, uh, there are uh, uh, different preparations now that are thought to improve uh, the health of the macula. So there are supplements that people are taking, you know, they have been uh, shown to result in improvement of the state of health of the macula. Because as you age, the macula can uh, age and you can develop uh, AMD. Some people call it AMD or ARMD. So it is managed by drugs. Some injections can be uh, you know, administered uh, uh, to the retina, to the macula, to uh, uh, at least relieve that problem caused by, you know, age-related macular degeneration. So most of the time, uh, this is not something, this is something that develops, uh, and like I said, the cause is generally unknown. So let's look at another one, uh, diabetic retinopathy. So I'm sure once you see diabetic, it means that there are diabetes in, involved in it. And retinopathy, well, anything in medicine that is called party is a pathology. So it's a problem with the retina. So, you know, uh, retinal problems, they are just retinal problems that are caused by diabetes. So uncontrolled uh, you know, diabetes can now affect different parts of the body and it can be devastating to sight when it affects the retina. So uncontrolled uh, diabetes definitely can now damage the vision. And I can tell you, this is a problem. This is a major problem. It's a difficult problem to manage, you know, Doctors uh, find, uh, you know, they have to go into a battle to manage uh, uh, this case of uh, diabetic uh, retinopathy. You know, they are generally managed by drugs. There are drugs that, that you need to control uh, your blood sugar and uh, diabetes. So that's the best way of avoiding diabetic uh, retinopathy. We all know uh, how uh, serious diabetes can be. This is uh, something that uh, is very stubborn and difficult you know, to manage. And we do not uh, pray that anybody uh, you know, gets afflicted by it. So let's look at some other, you know, situations that are age related that can result in uh, vision problems. 
dry eyes. These are age-related reduction of the quantity or the quality of tears produced by the tear glands of the eye. So that's the way I will uh, describe it. But this is a big issue for eye doctors across uh, the world. You might, as you're getting old, you might just uh, uh, continue to, uh, you know, have wet eyes or continue to tear and think that is nothing. You might just think that is nothing. Yes. If you are constantly tearing, ordinarily you might think uh, it's due to environment, maybe uh, the weather, or maybe uh, eyes are irritated by something. You need to have your eyes checked. Because when they are checked, they may find out that you, it's not just a simple thing that you have dry eyes or dry eye syndrome. And these are also very difficult problems to solve. You know, the tear fluid keeps the eye moisturized and the eye needs to be moisturized all the time. And I mentioned the quantity and the quality. So it's not just the quantity, but the quality of tears. Because if we go to look in details, about the tear. The tear fluid also has layers, different layers. Uh, generally, it has a, 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 a lipid layer, it has a watery layer, and it has a, an oily layer. So uh, what you know is that the oily layer is responsible for preventing the tear from uh, evaporating easily. So tear fluid does not uh, dry up like uh, uh, like um, ordinary uh, water because there are different layers that make sure that they control and each layer has what it does to the eye and generally the tear fluid is the first refractive surface of the eye so once you have deficiency in either the quantity or the quality of the tears being produced by the tear glands then it's something that uh, it might trigger overproduction of uh, tear from the tear glands and the person will be watering and think most of the patients ask me okay why are you saying that uh, i have dry eyes when i'm always uh, watering i'm always tearing but in reality that is how uh, it uh, presents that's how it presents so uh, you need an eye examination so if you have you are aging. Most people that are aging end up with uh, dry eyes. I can tell you a good percentage of aging people, aging population have dry eyes. I'm sure there's somebody in the crowd now that is using some sort of uh, lubricant uh, eye uh, preparation to rewet the eye. Of course, dry eyes are managed by uh, drugs and other procedures. There are different different uh, uh, devices that are used. Uh, it depends on the kind of dry eye you have. The doctor might decide, you know, to uh, to put a plug or to uh, to use eye drops or to use a heating device. There are so many devices uh, uh, in the uh, used in the industry now to manage uh, dry eyes, but definitely if you think you have, uh, you know, you're always watering, you're always having wet eyes, just see a doctor, see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist and, you know, they will tell you, you know, what you have. If it's nothing, then thank God they will also tell you and then you go away. So dry eye is also something that is uh, age related. Uh, another one I'll just quickly go to is uh, ptosis. Uh, maybe uh, we all have seen this, maybe we don't know this name, but ptosis is just the drooping of eyelids. 
most it's an aging problem. You know, there are muscles that keep the eyes in place. If the if the upper eyelid there there's a major muscle, a uh, levator muscle that uh, opens the eye, and uh, those uh, muscles are controlled, uh, you know, by nerves. So the brain tells, you know, the 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 the, the muscles how to open, when to open, and when to close. But if you find out that the uh, the eyelids are unable to open or close, then that is what we describe as ptosis. In if you look at this picture, I said pterygium and ptosis. We'll talk about pterygium later, but this is ptosis. This is in one eye. It could be in two eyes. You can see that the eye is drooping while this one is open. It can affect vision because when the eye cannot open, then this eye will just be seen partially. So this problem is also managed surgically. You know, if, uh, you know, it's managed surgically, uh, sometimes uh, neurologists might end up being involved. Uh, and uh, if it's a neurological problem causing uh, this dosis, then they treat that problem and then the eye might normalize, the eyelid might normalize. But generally, it's also a surgical, uh, surgically managed uh, problem. The region. So we will just go, we saw the picture, I'll go back to the picture. I'm sure most of us have seen uh, this situation. It's a benign growth that, you know, most of the time it grows horizontally across the eye. It can grow from the nasal side or temporal side. What I mean by the nasal side is uh, where the nose is. I don't know, in this picture, maybe the nose is here. Yeah, the nose is here. So this is nasal, this is temporal, okay? So this is the growth. It's just a growth. It's a benign growth. So uh, that ends up getting uh, blood vessels, uh, you know, enrich uh, the growth and then it keeps uh, progressing. And if you guess, this area that is black is the pupil. If this thing, this is growing on the cornea, and if it grows across, then it will impair vision. So, pterygium is generally managed surgically. It will be cut off, it will be scraped off surgically. And it is the, it's, it's one of those things again that the uh, the causes are unknown. You know, I told you that so many things. You know, we don't know what caused them. The causes are unknown. They are also uh, blaming uh, heredity, and it also uh, thought to be caused by the influence of the UV radiation from the sun. So you find out that people living in the tropics, lots of people living in the tropics have the pterygium. But it is also uh, worthy of note that most of the people who have uh, pterygium uh, have either their parents had them, and that's why it is uh, linked uh, to heredity. Let's look at floaters. I don't know if uh, we know what floaters, I think we know what floaters are. Most people have complained at one point or the other that they have tiny, they see tiny dots, you know, on the, uh, their view. When they are looking, they just see tiny prints, uh, tiny dots. And those tiny dots uh, and tiny particles caused by age-related changes that, that occur usually as the jelly-like substance, vitreous, inside your eye. You know, I showed you vitreous, you know, inside your eye liquefies and contracts. So there are other causes of floaters. 
you know, you know, there are other uh, causes of floaters. Floaters can be signs of other pathological changes in the eye, you know, but they are generally the major uh, floaters that form and are caused by age would be those ones that form because uh, the vitreous, uh, you know, is beginning to li liquefy due to age. So not all uh, uh, floaters can be really treated. Some remain there, some do not really uh, have serious effects on vision. But when they do, they are managed by the use of uh, certain drugs. So this is the picture again of uh, pterygium and tosis. You can see this is uh, somebody within uh, probably our, our age group. I don't know. Uh, so uh, we are gradually be, uh, getting towards the end of this, uh, you know, presentation. So we want to uh, just generally look at what you need to do to keep your eyesight strong. You know, just simplistic but effective things that you need to know that you need to do. So when you definitely have other serious problems, the doctors will tell you what to do. But a regular annual visit to an optometrist for an eye examination is a must because this will reveal eye problems before they get serious. I, I think I've said this before, you know, if you just have that habit of having a general eye examination, an annual eye examination, you know, if you had problems, Earlier on, those problems will show up during the examination, and then you know solutions uh, will be given to you, you know, before they get serious. So we know that the problem starts little by little, and until they get serious. And if you can, uh, you know, detect these issues early enough, then uh, there will be solutions definitely. So, and I said a dilated eye exam is required annually for every one above 50 years of age. So it cannot be overstressed. So while you want to do many other things, the first one you should do is to make sure that you check your eyes and then the doctors tell you your eyes are good, then you can go and do other things. Other things you can do is if you are uh, somebody who goes, uh, who is usually outdoors, like uh, I heard uh, uh, the president said uh, uh, people uh, played golf. Uh, I think there was, uh, he mentioned something about playing golf yesterday. So uh, members of course, Robin must be rich people, I'm sure. <laughs> they, they are playing golf. So if you are someone who plays golf, Please just endeavor to wear sunglasses outdoors, just to block, uh, uh, you know, your, protect your eyes from uh, UV, uh, harmful uh, UV.